What is up, you beautiful people? Welcome back to the Physique Development YouTube channel. This is vlog two of the TBD <laughs> half marathon prep vlog series that we have for you all. I hope that you enjoyed the back session that we took you through in the last episode. And today I'll be taking you through a strength focused leg session. One thing others have vocalized to me about the half marathon prep is balancing lower body training with the running. And I know that my mileage per week is very low relative to what it will be towards the end. And so maximizing the quality of my strength sessions right now when I have the ability and the recoverability to do so is very important. So I'm going into each of these sessions with a lot of focus and a lot of intensity with each and every set. We are bundled up for today's session. We got the jacket, we got the beanie. It is cold here in Ohio. It is, I think, five degrees outside. The wind chill was negative 14 this morning. Yuck. Running outside has been a nightmare. <laughs> we are going to get you guys footage of the running. We're still trying to figure out because it, it is ridiculously cold outside. Today's session is super straightforward. We're gonna get started with a trap bar, stiff leg RDL. We're gonna go into split squats following that. We have the leg extension, the lying leg curl, and then we end off with a standing calf raise. On paper, this looks super duper simple and easy, but I will show you through this session. Five exercises will be more than enough for us to see real progress. I have been at my desk all day today. I've had mentorship calls. I've been going through client check-ins. If you're interested in either of those things, the application form will be linked in the description below for my mentorship or to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. So it is paramount that I go through a really quality warm-up. And with the warm-up, I got some steps on the treadmill before we started filming. But in the warm-up, I really like to utilize exercises relative to dynamic stretching to get some blood to the areas in which I'll be training. So we're going to get started with the lying leg curl, and it's not going to be at a high intensity to where I'm going to be accumulating fatigue. It's just going to be a handful of repetitions with a hard contraction and making sure everything feels good. And then I'm gonna go into the 45 degree hip extension and do the same for my glutes. And then I'm going to finish off with these banded tibialis raises, which we'll probably dig into the setup of this because it's kind of a, a contraption as a whole. But I will be going through those tibialis raises and I'll do maybe two to three rounds and get right into my first working set. My least favorite part of how cold it is outside. Well, there's, there's a lot of not so favorite parts about under five degree weather, but how dry my skin gets. I feel like I'm just jumping in a pool of lotion every day. Get out, shake it off. And then five seconds later, my skin's hella dry and itchy again. And I cannot stand it. I just want my skin to not be itchy. If there is a lotion out there that you guys are like, dude, you have to get this one, please drop it in the comments because I feel like I've tried everything. Drive me insane. This fancy half cage trap bar is from Prime Fitness. I feel like every single time we record with this piece of equipment, it's immediately dropped in the comment section. You can grab one of these on their website. I think we have a discount code. We may not. We'll put it on the screen if we do. <laughs> When we are performing a stiff-legged RDL relative to a bit knee RDL, the biggest difference is going to be in the range of motion. Now, without the bend in my knee, I'm not going to be able to go down as far because my goal is to only allow myself to lower the load as long as my hips are going back. If I bend at the knee, I can get more uh, hip flexion and driving my hips back. If I'm stiff through the knee, I have less capabilities of doing that. So my range of motion will be less. By also not bending at the knee, I will have a greater emphasis on my hamstrings relative to when I am bending at the knee, I'm going to have a greater bias towards my glutes. When it comes to warm up sets, I really try and focus on only having a few repetitions because my working set is going to be six reps today. 
my warm-ups are only going to be two, maybe three repetitions and really honing in on where is my range of motion? Do I feel strong in the most challenging positions of the exercise, which in this one, it is going to be at the bottom. And so do I feel strong there? Do I feel stable there? Do I feel powerful going into the concentric action of the exercise, raising out and driving my hips forward? Those are the, the checklists that I have as I'm going through my warm-up sets. And I may have two at maximum three warmups before I get into my first wor working set. But the biggest thing is that I do not want to create any fatigue on the target muscle group by spending too much time or too many repetitions in the warmup sets. I get antsy in my warmup sets. I'm like, I always, I like rush through them. I'm like, I just, want, I just want to get training, dude. I just want to get going. And so, kind of relax. All right, now, I am good to go. I have a bougie story to share with you guys. So this is our garage. I have to go outside for a very short period of time, go back into the house to pee. Not a huge deal. I'm talking, I'm walking maybe 50 yards total, tops. My wife, the beautiful Sue Gaines that you guys all know and love, this woman, hates the idea of having to go outside. Now, I, I understand it's warm in here, you get cold and then you go back to warm, it's very, un, it's not the best, you know, temperature wise. But this woman wanted us to try and find a way to build a bathroom onto the garage. She, she wanted to just knock out the wall, put a door, outhouse, right, right there. Crazy, I almost gave in. Me being me, wanting to support my wife, have what she wants, I almost did it but I gotta go pee and I'm gonna go outside and go back inside, <laughs> BRB. <laughs> With our first exercise today, I will have four sets of six repetitions each. I will be titrating up my RPE from the first set to the final set. So for the first set, I will have a seven RPE, which is what you guys just saw and nailed it. Cardiovascularly, struggling a little bit. Second set will be at an eight RPE. I'm going to add 10 pounds on each side and then the third set will be nine RPE, and then my final set will be to mechanical failure. When we talk about mechanical failure, this is going to be something where as soon as I have a breakdown in form and could not control the load for another eccentric repetition, I will drop the weight. In the last episode, I went to failure and honestly beyond failure into partials with my back movements. The reason that I'm doing it differently here is that with the cable exercises that we were doing, much less injury risk. And I'm able to continue to control the load while maintaining tension on the intended muscle group. With this movement, I have a heightened injury risk as well as the eccentric portion is going to be very challenging if I cannot if I'm having a breakdown in form. So paying more attention to that and assessing the injury risk within the different exercises will dictate what kind of failure you're going to go to when completing a failure set in that exercise. Number two, RPE of eight.
my ego going into this third set is take off the stupid 10 and put on a quarter. And I know that that would be pushing the boundaries a little bit. The smart part of my brain is saying, you know what? You should probably just put a five on each side and that will be a better third set. But sometimes I listen to that little savage, that little asshole in the back of my head of like, you little bitch, put on more weight. All right, you know? But today, I think I'm gonna be a little bit more conservative because I know I should. <laughs> testing, testing. Hopefully this works because we're gonna probably leave it here for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I can't, I mean, I literally see people have it like way out here on their bill. Yeah. If this is right next to my head, I feel like it should be okay. Yeah. If you do not have Versa Grips and your goal is to get stronger in your lower body exercises to create the greatest degree of hypertrophy, grow your glutes, you are doing yourself a disservice because as you are going heavier and heavier in RDLs and in split squats, your forearms are going to give out before your glutes, your hamstrings, and your quads. These massive muscle groups that are contributing to this heavy weight that you are carrying are going to have more to give when your forearms are done. And so having wrist straps will actually get you much closer to the goal that you have and reaching muscular failure or near muscular failure when performing these heavy exercises. Jeez. Why are you holding yourself back more than you need to with something you like legitimately know is going to help? And I guess you only know what you know and if you've never used them before, you're like, I've made this much progress so far, I'm gonna keep making more progress without them. And it's like, you could make even better progress with them. So you might as well grab them. For this final set, I am gonna to listen to that little asshole voice. I'm gonna throw the quarter on and give it everything I've got for this final set. If I get to six, amazing. If I get to five, it is what it is. If I get to four, I'm too soft. We'll see. All right, last set. That was, uh, if that wasn't an RP 10, it's pretty damn close. So I will take it. And now we move into split squats. Let's see what weight I can even do today. My best set of six is with the one tens. I do not see that happening today. Today's split squat is not going to have a particular bias of quad or glute. I'm going to have more of a balanced approach and we're just going for overall strength. So I'm still going to have the heel wedge in place to increase the amount of knee flexion I'm capable of. And then I'm only going to elevate my back foot enough to where as I lower, my knee does not run into the ground. So those would be the main two things from a setup perspective. And I'm gonna be holding two dumbbells, or a dumbbell in both hands and I will be executing with a slight hinge with greater knee flexion and absolutely getting after it the entire time.
With your unilateral leg work, arm work, take a little bit of a break. It doesn't have to be super long, but enough to catch your breath and um, like recenter yourself before going into the next leg. Don't just scoot the wedge over, move your feet, and jump into the next leg. Like to me, that would be a sign that the weight is not heavy enough. Like you need to be able to catch your breath, get reset, and then go after the next leg. Or I'm out of shape. Whatever you want to believe, but I like the first answer more. I sandbagged. Time to go up. My first set was supposed to be an RPE of seven. As you saw that last set, I had much more than three reps left in the tank. So we're gonna go up. And uh, the goal here is to get to an RPE of eight with my second set. I will say my gauge for RPE on lower body training is not near as good as my upper body RPE gauge. I think I only have one speed when it comes to lower body training, and that is redline it, go to all out to failure. So I'm trying to fix that because recovery wise, especially with the running, is going to be a big hindrance if I don't figure it out. It just feels good to be back like fully training again after being sick and everything. Yesterday was like the first time I looked in the mirror, I was like, I look like I lift again after what felt like eternity of looking like a, a little wet noodle. Okay, sandbag no more. That sucked. I think I will stay at that weight. So what Aaron had said coming off of being sick with the 14 miles was that if I can at least walk run all 14 miles, that would be at bare minimum. So I think I ran either eight or 10 and then I walk the rest. This week, I don't think we, I have to look back at the log, but I do not think we increased miles because I didn't run all of them. Um, and I would say right now, I'm at eight and it's Wednesday. So I'm much more on track and I feel much more capable. If I run three or four miles, that's a big chunk of my steps. Yeah. I would say between like, I don't know exactly off the top of my head, but like four to 6,000 of them, knocked out in those three or four miles. And so that's a huge help to me because <clears throat> just like doing general house task, I get probably three. Like going, going down to the basement, doing stuff down there. Like yesterday I did laundry, today I'll do some stuff around on the main floor. And that'll be, you know, at least, at least 2,500 if not 3,000. And so then if I have a three or four mile run, it's done. All right, back to it.
We solidified it this morning. Keen and I went back and forth. What we're gonna do is we're gonna finish this. So this is gonna be like brush behind the rhino. For my leg, it's gonna be like this portion of it. And it's gonna be the, like a really tight up of the ship and a lot of detail of the ship and it being like damaged and flames coming out of the front of it and then smoke kind of grating like up through my knee. And so then the ship will be like sinking and burning going into here and I'll just be like halfway down my leg. The only unfortunate part for me and where I'm wanting it is like, that's literally just bone. <laughs> I mean, that is literally like, I've got muscle obviously here, but that is, there's nothing here to like give me a little bit of grace. Yeah, it's gonna be something. Oops. Okay. All right. Let's finish this thing off. It gets dark here. Wait. It get it gets dark quick here in Ohio, as you guys can see. It's already pitch black outside. We just finished the split squats. We are eight sets in, and I have gotten my ass beat so far. We're going to the leg extensions. We've got three sets of eight here. We have three sets of eight on the lying hamstring curl. And then we have three sets of the standing calf raise. Intensity is everything. We don't have a ton of juice left in my system. And we've got only a few sets in each of these exercises. So I'm gonna get after it every single set. I'm supersetting these two exercises to save myself a little bit of time. It's getting dark, I'm getting hungry. I got more work to do, I wanna shower. So, but supersetting these two exercises is not going to hinder my strength in either of them. My quads are being trained here and my hamstrings are being trained here. The only thing that would hold back my strength in either of these exercises is the cardiovascular fatigue that I would be experiencing. Because of my cardiovascular level, I do not think that that is going to hold me back from using the same amount of weight in these particular exercises. So this is an opportunity for me to save a little bit of time and get the same workload done.
Calves are something I have neglected for a very long period of time. And I've always hoped and wished that I was gonna see my calves grow, but it was, that's all I was putting into it. I was not putting the effort into training them. And then as I started running last year, I was rudely awakened with, hey bitch, your calves are weak, your tibialis is weak, and this is why running sucks for you. So now we've gotta strengthen my calf, we have to strengthen my tibialis, we've gotta strengthen my ankles and doing my calves at the end of my leg sessions is paramount. I wish I would have been taking measurements from the time that I started to take it more serious. Visually, it looks like it to me. Um, I do not look near as peg leg as I once did, but I wouldn't say it's like overly drastic. But I bet if I went, if I go back and like, if I go back and look at the old exercise execution videos, like I look at when we're at the old house, and like see the difference in my body since then, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm impressed with myself at that point. But if I'm just looking at physique photos, I'm like, I see a little bit of change. But like the real life stuff where I've got clothes, like my, you know, not just wearing my uh, boxer briefs for check-in photos, I see more there. One thing that held back my calf growth for a long time is that I did not like how my feet looked wearing a size 11 shoe. So for the longest time, I wore a 10 or a 10 and a half because I thought style-wise, it looked better with the proportions of my body. So I would cram my toes into a lot of shoes. 
And if you're not familiar with the function of how your calves are going to work, spreading your toes, letting your toes function properly, to lift your, lift your heels up and go into plantar flexion and so on and so forth, it's a pivotal part of the function to your calf and soleus for that matter. So if you are someone who's like, I wear a half size down or a full size down because I think it looks better and I'm upset that my calves are not growing, stop doing that. <laughs> I may be the only person who's ever done that. Every person I tell that, they're like, well, what is wrong with you? And then they like learn something new about me of like, you really care. Like you really care about your style and how you look. <laughs> no shit, dude, look at my job. <laughs> I literally critique physiques on a day-to-day -day basis and nitpick at bodies every day. <laughs> Last set of what feels like an extremely long workout. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's all she wrote. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the TBD. <laughs> Getting ready for the half marathon vlog series. We'll see you in the next episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave us a like, comment what you want to see in the next episode, and we'll see you there. What should we call this thing? <laughs> Dude, what should we call it? Tell us what we should call it. <laughs>